I've seen this image on the, the internet, so now I know where I'm at. How does it feel to do that? It, it feels great. Um, you see my U on my chest. Uh, I decided to wear that today. I probably should ask my producer, can I wear it? But I figured since it's a normal model, it's going to be okay. But uh, it did me, it was good medicine to come here and see everybody and uh, a lot of the, obviously, a lot of players I recruited. And, just see the building and uh, see Manny and the staff. Uh, brought back a lot of good memories. Mark, you get to look at football now from a whole different perspective. Right. Um, how has that changed things for you and how you? See uh, it's it? a lot more fun. No, it's, it, it was fun coaching, believe me. But it was, it was a different kind of fun. You know, the competition phase of uh, football. It's kind of the overriding factor. I mean, just the desire to be great, the desire to win, and in the in the meantime, the desire to build good men. You know, it's a it's a huge job, and uh, so the amount of time it takes to do what I do now compared to coaching is night and day. And uh, but I do get to keep uh, my mind on football and get a chance to um, you know, just see some great kids grow up and do great things. It's 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 been fun for me, Coach. Us? curious what this building kind of means to you um, when you look yeah, around. Yeah, I mean, obviously uh, I had a lot to do with this as far as the planning of it and, you know, Blake James and Jen Strawley, you know, our administration, they were great about wanting to know what I wanted it to look like and what needed to be done. And so I had a close personal relationship with Carlos Pedro and the superintendent of the project. And I mean, I literally walked the yard uh, every single day before I went home with Carlos and so all the little things that are so important to make it just right, they allowed me to do, and uh, it came out great. I'm really proud of how it came out. Have you watched the team practice at all? Yeah, well, you know, I actually was hanging out in the head coach's office. I uh, took the soft uh, route and uh, was in the air conditioning during practice today. But, uh, you know, Manny's got a great view of practice on the grass and in, in the indoor. So. Uh, I thought I'd take advantage of it at least one time. But I got, you know, today was a uh, more of a situational practice. Uh, kind of the things you uh, only need when you need them, so to speak. Things like onside kicks and hands team. And just situational stuff at the end of the game that you don't necessarily practice all the time after the last scrimmage. So uh, it was fun to watch, but it wasn't a lot of offense, defense today. What do you think of this team's chances against Alabama? Well, you know, one thing I believe is any team that's going to beat Alabama, they've got to have a great team, period. But they got to have excellent quarterback play. And if you don't have a, a great day at that position, you've got no chance. And uh, you know, we know D.R. King is a special player. and uh, looks like his rehab has gone tremendously well. I don't think there's any doubt he's going to be playing in that game. And very confident. You know, just talking to him on the side. He's, he's confident in his – ability to move, change direction, and play the physical game of football. And uh, so they're they're embracing the challenge of it. And that's that's a big part of winning those games is believing you can do it. How has Manny grown, you know, since compared to now from when, you know, he was with you, how you, know, you can kind of see how he is as a head well, coach? Well, I think, I mean, I always knew Manny was head coach of material. Uh, he always could see the big picture. Obviously, he's a great position coach, defensive coordinator play caller as a def defensive coach. But he was also a guy that could see the big picture. And, uh, you know, when, when I had to make decisions, even while we were here together, I'd run things by him because I trusted his judgment on things that were off the field maybe or disciplinary things, whatever it may be. So I kind of knew he was destined to be a head coach. And I always felt like Miami would be a great fit for Coach Diaz and he'd be a great fit for Miami. And, and here he is. Hey Mark, from your first first being able to look at everybody, how do you see the ACC this year? Well, like most everybody believes, Clemson ought to win the Coastal, I mean, the Atlantic, and probably the whole ball of wax. I mean, it'll be a uh, an upset if anybody beats them in the regular season or in the championship game. But, you know, uh, Clemson, even during their run, they've lost a couple games here and there. Just haven't lost the game, the championship game. But... Uh, you know, one 60-minute game can change everything as far as who's on top. And if you get to that ACC championship game and uh, 
somebody wins that game, Miami, Pitt, North Carolina, whoever it may be, um, all they got to do is win that one and they're the champ. So they've been thrown close. How do you see the Coastal? You deal with that? Your, uh, well, and you know, I mentioned North Carolina, Miami, Pitt. I think they're the top three. And you know, like like we all know, just about everybody's quarterbacks back, or at least some starting experience coming back to every school in the league, except for Duke. And uh, when you watch, when you do what I do and watch a lot of football. It's painful to watch football with teams that don't have a quarterback that can get the job done for whatever reason. But when all these teams got quarterbacks that can play, I think we're going to see. An excellent brand of football, some great tight games, and games coming down to the wire where quarterbacks got to make big plays to win them. So, you know, whoever wins the close ones between Pitt, North Carolina, and Miami, I think will represent. Mark, do, do, I was curious, I want to get your take on quarter, quarterbacks. Yeah. You've been around a lot. Sure. Is, is there sort of one attribute that kind of supersedes everything? Right, well, real quick on my quarterback, uh, what I'm looking for in a quarterback. Accuracy, I mean, you gotta be able to hit your target, period. Uh, you gotta be able to make the throws. Number two, are you a good decision maker? Okay, you can learn that through practice, through meetings and things of that nature. Number three, though, is can you handle the pressure of the job? It's hard to know if a guy can handle the pressure of the job until he has the job. And so that's the one thing like a De'Ara King has brought that Miami was sorely missing during the time I was here was, you know, Kaya had it you know, Malik had some of it. For the most part, we became a very immature group of guys in the quarterback room. And then, you know, King coming in solved all those issues. All right, guys.